Hello everyone and welcome to Django Level 3. Hopefully you are now excited by the possibilities of the MTV workflows, those models, templates, and views workflows that we've already learned about in Django Level 1 and Django Level 2. But we're still missing a big piece to creating a full website, and that is user input. In this section, we're going to be covering how to use Django Forms to accept user input and connect it to the database and your models, and then retrieve it later on. All right, let's get started. I'll see you at the next lecture. Hello everyone and welcome to the Django Basic Forms lecture for Django Level 3. In this lecture what we're going to be doing is conceptually walking through the process of creating a form with Django. So we won't actually do any coding, you can just sit back, relax, and watch this lecture almost like a game plan for the next lecture where we're going to be coding through a lot of the topics we discuss here. All right. We've covered forms when discussing HTML, so you might be wondering, why bother with Django Forms? What extra features do they bring to the table? Well, Django Forms have lots of advantages, and here are three distinct ones. The first one is that they can quickly generate HTML form widgets. Those are things such as your inputs, where you have to specify the input will be an email type, or a text type, text area type, etc., checkboxes. Forms with Django allow you to just generate those quickly, like with template tagging. Another advantage is that you can validate data and process it into a Python data structure so you can quickly use it in the back end. And you can also make your own custom validation rules. And then a third point is that you can create form versions of our models and then quickly update models from forms. And we'll talk about that in a future lecture. Okay, so let's actually walk through the steps you would have to take in order to create a form on your website from your web application. And the very first thing you need to do is actually create a forms.py file inside your application. Just like we previously created a urls.py file inside the application, we have to create a forms.py file because it doesn't come standard. After that, we call Django's built-in forms classes, and this looks very similar to creating a model of Django. Let's see an example of this. So an example of what would be inside your forms.py file inside of your application would be something like this. You say from Django import forms, and then you have a class form name, forms.form, where every input is essentially a class object attribute. And you should notice that this looks a lot like creating a model with Django. So that's really good because you can have that similar feel across various aspects of Django. So you don't need to relearn a completely different paradigm for creating a form. It feels and looks like a model. Again, looks similar to a model. And now that we have the form created inside the application's forms.py file, we need to show it using a view. So inside your views.py file of your application, we need to import the forms. And there's two ways to do this. One is you can say from dot import forms, and dot just means look at the current directory, or you can do what we've been doing in the past and actually explicitly saying from forms import and then that actual form name. So if we go back, we call the class form name. So if you were inside of your views.py file, you would say from that forms.py file you just created, import that class object form name. And again, that dot just indicates to import from the same directory as the current.py file. Either one of these methods is okay. Once you've imported the form, you can create a new view for it. And it looks really similar to when you were creating a view and calling a model, except this time you're actually calling a form. So you say your function def, form name view, whatever you want that actual view to be called. It takes in a request to create a temporary object called form equals forms dot and then whatever your class is. So again, that's the forms.py file, the class from it, set that equal to a variable, and then return render, pass in request, pass in the name of the HTML file it's going to hold that form, and then you pass in the context dictionary, where you have a, some key bringing back that form from form name. Again, very similar feel to how we were working with models in our views.py file. And then all you have to do is add the view to the app's URLs, either directly or with the include function. If you do it directly, it just looks something like this. You'll say from your application, import views, and then somewhere inside your URL patterns file, you'll say the URL function, pass in the actual extension of your URL that you want the form to be on, views dot whatever the view is called. So in this case, we called it form name view, and then you give it a name such as form name. Again, I'm using really generic terms here, so you can later replace them with your own names. All right, so we can then create the templates folder along with the HTML file that will hold the actual template tagging for the form. And remember to update the settings.py file to reflect the new template directory variable. 
We did that in Django level one, so you can review it or you can watch the next lecture where we'll go and start the process from scratch so you can remember how to actually fix that in your settings.py file. Okay, then you should also remember that your views should reflect subdirectories inside templates. And again, we'll talk about that when we walk through it in the next lecture. And once you've done that, everything is set up for us to go into the form name.html file or whatever HTML file is going to house the actual form itself. And that's going to be usually placed inside your templates folder and then the subdirectory of your application folder and add in the actual template tagging that will create the Django form. So just like we injected of template tagging stuff from the model, we can quickly inject the actual form. So there are several ways you can inject the form using template tagging. You can just pass in the key from the context dictionary. So remember the key from the context dictionary we had was just form. So you would just have these set of curly brackets and pass in form. You usually won't see it so plainly, but this is technically all you have to do. And before we continue, let's have a quick side discussion about three topics, HTTP, GET, and POST, since we're going to be using those to connect our form to our actual backend. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and it is designed to enable communication between a client and a server. The client submits a request, and then the server responds. The most commonly used methods for this request response protocol are GET and POST. GET requests data from a resource, and then POST submits data to be processed to a specific resource. Again, pretty simple idea. A request and then a response. So those are the basics that we need to know for now, but you can check out the w3schools.com page on GET slash POST for a lot more details, like what remains in browser history, whether you're using GET or POST, and what can be cached for future use. It's a really simple concept, so you can just check out that page, but basically, you just need to know that you're using a sort of request response protocol when working with forms. And once you've put in that forms template tag, you should be able to see a very basic and honestly ugly looking form on that page. However, you won't actually have an HTML form tag there. So let's look at what a more completed form HTML page would look like. So on your form page.html, realistically, you're gonna have something that looks like this. So we've had some added bootstrap class styling calls, and that's the div class container. And we're also calling the form as underscore P, which uses a paragraph. And that's going to allow you to have a nicer layout of your actual form. It's going to return it within paragraph tags. That way they're actually lined up from top to bottom instead of from left to right. If you just use form by itself inside those two sets of curly brackets, it's going to go from left to right and you're not gonna have a form looking form. That means top down instead of that left to right. And that gives you a nice format to work with using those paragraph tags, which are automatically put there with the as underscore P. And you can also check the Django docs for other methods. You can request a form as a table, for instance, and work with it that way. And you also notice that I added the CSRF underscore token tag. So this is actually the first time we've encountered thinking about site security measures. That little CSRF tag token, that if we go back, it's right underneath the actual form template tagging. That is a what is known as a cross-site request forgery token. And that secures the HTTP post action that is initiated on the subsequent submission of a form. So when you click submit, you have this cross-site request forgery token that helps protect the user or your website from getting false data or from a user accidentally sending that data somewhere else. So the Django framework actually requires that CSRF token to be present. If it's not there, your form may just not work. So that means Django security is actually built into the fact that it won't really work unless you provide that token. So you'll get into the habit of just remembering to provide that token whenever you're working with forms. And it generally works by using what's known as a hidden input which automatically uses some random code and checks that it matches the user's local site page. We don't, know, we don't need to know uh, a whole lot about how that random code is generated, but basically just know you always need to add in, if we go back two slides, you always need to add in that CSRF token to make sure your form works correctly and that it's secure. Okay, so again, just need to remember to put that template tag there. You don't need to worry about the background. Now that we can show the form, let's discuss how to actually handle the form in a view. Okay, so right now, if you set up everything the way you've been describing and you had a submit button there and your user clicked it, nothing would happen. And that's because we still need to inform the view 
that if you actually get a post back, meaning the user submits and has a response to your request for information, you should actually check if the data is valid. And if so, you can then grab and use that data. And you can actually do this by editing the view. So far, we just showed you a simple view. We're going to talk about a more advanced one. And later on, we'll actually talk a lot more about form validation. And now you can have your own custom validation rules. But for now, upon receiving a validated form, we'll assume it's just valid. We can access what's known as a dictionary-like attribute of that actual data called clean data. And this will look something like this. So it, this is inside your application's views.py file. We've edited the view a little bit. First, we just had that form is equal to forms.form name. And then we had all the way at the bottom that render request, form page.html, and then the form form. And what we've added in is everything in the middle. So the basic steps look like this. First, you check to see if you actually get a post back, meaning if the request.method is equal to post, that means your user hit submit and is posting something back. In which case, you want to pass in that request. So what you say now is form is equal to forms.form name, pass in the request.post. And then you want to check if the form is valid. And we'll talk a lot more about form validation in a future lecture. But once you have that, you can call form.cleanData and then access the information with a key dictionary call. So here you can see I'm just printing it out straight into the console. So I'll say form validation success, prints in the console, and then I will print out the name, email, and text they provided in that form. So it was a very simple form, just asking for three fields. Okay, so we still have a lot more topics to cover, like customizing form validation, connecting forms to a model, which we haven't even really discussed yet. But before we do all that, let's get some practice with what we know so far and create a basic form project and application from scratch. That's really going to help your understanding. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you at the next lecture where we're going to be coding everything we just talked about. Hello everyone and welcome to the Form Basics Code Along Lecture. In this lecture we'll just be coding through all the concepts we previously discussed in the last lecture. Let's go to the editor and get started. Okay, here I am at the editor. The first thing I'm going to do is cd into a new folder I just made called Django Level 3. And then there I'm going to actually create the project. So I will call my Django-admin command line tool We'll say start the project, and we can just call this project whatever we want. I'll call it something like basic forms. And this should start off the project, and after that we can start off the application. So I will cd into the top level basic forms, and then call Django admin start app to start our application, and we can call this just basic app. Just using simple names here, and now if I expand this, I see the folders and files that I was looking for. And let's actually create our templates folder that goes under the top level project folder. Create a new folder, call it templates. And then inside of this, I wanna create another folder that matches the basic app name. And this is where the applications HTML templates are going to go. And then we'll create a new file here, call it index.html. And we'll create another file and this one we can call something like form underscore page.html. So under this index.html, that's just going to be the home page. I'll type HTML and we'll give it the title home. Say heading one, welcome to home page. Save that. And then the form page, that's where we're actually going to be using template tagging and doing a lot more. So we'll just leave it with the title forms for now, but we'll do a lot more at this page later on. What we need to do is actually edit our settings.py file so it knows where the templates are and that we have an application that we just made. So we'll open up settings and then let's set up the template directory. So that's going to be template underscore dir and we'll set that equal to os.path.join and I wanna join the base directory with templates. And then what I wanna do is scroll down to where we have installed apps, make sure I include the app I just made, which is basic app and then continue to templates and pass in that template directory I just made. There we go. So I will save this. So now my settings are ready to go. And now we can get started with actually creating the forms, which means inside of my basic app, I'm going to right click, create a new file, call it forms.py, hit enter. And then it's going to look very similar to building up a model. We'll say from Django, import forms, 
previously we had done import models. Then we'll create a class. I'll call this just a very basic form name class. And then we'll say forms.form. Again, we basically did models.model .model last time, so hopefully this feels really familiar. Just using the same paradigm. And then we'll say name, let's create a couple of fields. So now instead of making database fields, we're making essentially what are form fields, those text inputs, text areas, etc. So this will be a character field for the actual name. We'll also have this person provide an email in their form. So we'll say forms dot, let's say an email field. And then we can say, let's have a text area field. So the way you do that is you say forms, pass in a character field, and inside of this, you can specify a particular widget. And you can check out the documentation for a list of all the widgets available. But essentially what you do is just call forms and then pass in the widget method or widget attribute that corresponds to the actual type you would specify in the HTML. So remember when we were making forms of HTML, we would specify, oh, this is a type text area input. Here we're just specifying it as a widget inside of this character field. And you can kind of see how this would match up later on when we connect this to a model. Right now we're just using a very basic form. Later on we'll see how to use model forms. Okay, that's really all we need to do here for the forms.py file. What we can do now is set up the views that will actually return these pages correctly. So we'll say from, and I can just say from dot, import forms, or I could also say from basic app import forms. Okay, it's basically the same. And let's create an index view. Just get that out of the way. That's going to be a simple request. And we'll return render function with the request. And let's pass in the actual file we want to do. So that goes under templates, which is going to be then basic app index.html. And we'll start off with a very basic view before we actually check for the post. So the most basic view you can get for a form looks something like this. So whatever your form name view you want, it takes in a request. And then inside of this, I'm going to say the form is equal to, and I imported forms dot, and whatever the actual class you call that form. Here it's telling me we we'll called it form name, so that's fine. So we'll make an instance of that form name class here. And I'm going to return with the render function, pass in request like we always do, pass in the page I want to show. In this case, I want to say basic, and we call that page form underscore page dot HTML. And then finally, the context dictionary. We'll give it the key form, and we'll pass in that actual form object. And again, you can be flexible with whatever you want to call these things. Maybe you don't like that I'm using the word form so much or basic so much. It's really up to you, whatever you want to call these. Now that we have these views set up, we want to make sure that we actually point URLs in the right way. So I'll come to the project urls.py file. We could also have urls.py file point to the applications URLs and do it that way. Remember, it was including this other URL configuration. We'll just do a simple function view for now keep things pretty simple. So let's add in a URL call here. Well, first we actually need to import from our application. We'll say from basic app import views. That way I can call them. We'll use the function method here. Remember that's this very first one where we just use this syntax. So come down and then say URL and I'm going to specify for the home page. That's just caret symbol dollar sign using regular expressions and then say views.index and we'll give it the name index. And then I like always having the first two be the home page and then the admin site and then everything else being your actual pages. So we'll say regular expression caret symbol and let's have the extension for this be something like form page. It's really up to you whatever you want to call it. This basically just says, okay, if you go to your URL slash form page and anything after that, it's going to take you to the views dot, and then the view, in this case, we called it form underscore name underscore view, and we'll give it the name form underscore name. All right, so that should be all we need for the URL patterns. 
And now let's actually go with the templates and show you how to use the template tagging to actually inject that form. Our index page looks pretty simple. We'll add one more thing that says go to slash form page to fill out the form. Let's double check that that was the actual URL I gave slash form page. Yes, it was. And then on the form page, we're going to, let's put this all in a div that we can use later. I'll give it the container class. I haven't imported Bootstrap yet, but that's okay. We'll show that when we kind of want to improve the site, but let's keep everything super basic. And I'm going to just say form here. Again, I'm not even checking if there is a form. I'm just saying form. Let's save that and see if we actually can get everything to work. Hopefully we didn't forget anything, but I'm going to say python manage.py run server, hit enter. Let's see if there's any errors that pop up to us. Okay, now I'm going to copy this and bring in over my browser. So it looks like we got the home page working out. We see go to slash form page to fill out the form. Let's see if that also works. Go to form page and here we can see the actual form. We have name, email, and text. It looks super ugly. Um, and we see if I type something in, there's not even a submit button here. So it's pretty uh, bland, but we can see that we're actually starting to get the very basics of a form. Here's that text area widget. Great. Now let's add some stuff to actually improve this. And most of it is going to happen on the form page.html and in the actual forms.py file. First thing we want to do is let's just actually make this look good since we're going to be looking at it quite a lot. I will say here in the head of my HTML files, I'll paste in the link to Bootstrap. Just going to use Bootstrap 3 for now, keep things simple. And we'll also do it in the index.html. Save that and let's put all of this inside of a container class. And let's put that inside of a Jumbotron just to make the home page look a little nicer. We'll grab these two headings and then put them inside these divs. Save that. And then for the form page, we have to add in uh, quite a bit. So we have that container class, so that works out for us. But notice we actually don't even have any form tags. And those form tags, so the basic form HTML tags, those are not made for you when you call form here. So what you need to do is actually have those provided that way you can say what you want to do. We'll don't, we won't worry about class or action for now. You can worry about class when you want to style this a little more with Bootstrap. But for now, this div container should be enough. Let's add in a heading here that says fill out the form, save that. And then I'm going to request a form as underscore P. And that's going to request each of those form widgets to be instead of a paragraph tag, that way they don't go from left to right, but instead we get that actual line break and they go from top to bottom. And then we also need inside of these form tags to ask for the input. And also as a quick note, I have the method right now being post inside of the form, lowercase or capital, that either way it should work. So we'll capitalize it just so it's really clear there. And I want the input to be type, let's make it submit and we don't really have to give it a name for now. We could give it a class if we want it to look a little nicer. We can say btn and then btn primary, one of those bootstrap classes. And let's give it a value so we actually see something inside the button and we'll hit save. So now I'm going to grab that URL again, see what it looks like. Bringing that in, obviously the home page looks a lot nicer with that jumbotron. And then let's go to form page see what that ends up looking like. And this looks way nicer with the bootstrap, fill out form, we can see stuff is looking good. But notice if I hit submit, um, well, let's actually fix that email, gmail.com. I hit submit and I'm getting an error, CSRF ver verification failed, request aborted. So remember, as I mentioned in the previous lecture, we need to have that tag there in order to have the security that we need to make sure our users are safe from submitting their form or submitting data to some other website. So, as I mentioned, a lot of these forms are going to break if you don't have that tag, which is a good thing. Keeps you a good, safe programmer. So let's add in that token. We'll save it. And you can add it above or below the form. Should work the same. And I'm going to refresh the page. 
and make sure it's working. And to do this, I'm actually probably going to need to restart the server. So we'll say python manage.py run server, and then let's come back to this again. And now when I re come to the page, and you have to uh, not just refresh, you have to go back to it. Here, let's see if I type some stuff out. If we'll actually try accepting something. So if I hit submit, notice that over here on the bottom, I had a bunch of get calls, but now I get a post here. So it's actually accepting the information. Now let's show you how you can do stuff with that data. So we'll edit our view. Coming back to views.py, we have our very basic form view. It doesn't really do anything though when I actually post the data. So we're, as we were mentioning in the previous lecture, if you just have this view and this form, you have a good looking form, you have the token so it's secure, but you're not doing anything with that data once it gets posted to you. So what we're going to do is come back to views and actually show you a very simple example of something you could do it with it. Um, you're not going to just print out the data into the console, but this will show you an idea of how you can actually grab that data. Later on, we'll show you much more complicated things you can do with the data. Right now, we'll keep things simple and just print out whatever the person puts into that form directly into the console. And what I'll do to start off is have the form equal forms that form name. That's fine. Let me collapse the tree so we get a little more room here. And then the first thing I'm going to do is check if the request, then call the method attribute is equal to post, meaning someone actually hit submit and posted something back, I'm going to need to pass in that request. So now I will say form is equal to forms.form name and then pass in that request dot post. And depending on what plugins you have, if you downloaded some Django plugins, uh, you'll have a lot more help in syntax highlighting here. So keep that in mind. And then we'll say if the form and it has a method called isValid, which is essentially a Boolean check to see if the form is actually valid. And we'll talk a lot more about custom validation checks later on. Right now, this should automatically return it's valid as long as it uh, works with the HTML inputs, like the at symbol in an email input. So again, if the form's valid and the request method is post, I can do something here. So this is where your do something code will work. So let's show you a very simple thing you can do with it. And let's just grab the data and print it out. Probably would never actually do this, but just to show that it works. So we'll say validation success. So we successfully validated the data from the post. And then I'll show you how to access that data. So you grab your form object. And then off of that, one way to do it is by grabbing dot cleaned underscore data and then those actual fields that you had in your form. So if you go to forms.py, remember we had these object uh, class, class object attributes, the name, email, and text. Coming back here, that's what you pass in as the key. So I can pass in name here. And then I can print this out directly into the console. And to show a little bit of nicer formatting, we won't just print that out, but I will say name space. And then we're going to do this again for the other two fields. So I'll do a paste here and I'm going to say email and then I'm going to say here text. And if this is ever going too fast for you, you can always reference the notes and you can reference the presentation, the slides that is, for kind of a walkthrough of the steps we're doing here. And then we have email and then whatever text they happen to put in the text area. Okay, so we'll save that. The render stays the same. And now let's bring our, let's quit the server and run it again. We shouldn't have to do this, but just to make sure that everything uh, got posted as a change and bring in our browser. Okay, so here it is at the home page. And what we're going to do is go to slash form page. We'll fill out the form. So we'll say, my name is Jose. My name, email is hello at gmail.com and then some random text. So if I hit submit now, we see it here printed out in the console. Jose, emails hello at gmail.com, text, etc. And that is the very basics of a Django form. Hopefully you can see how powerful Django is just with the most basic form. You can grab data that the user inputted and easily work with it. And you had the advantage of just having to put essentially uh, two very small 
template tags in the form, a lot easier than what we've seen in the past. Okay, thanks everyone. If you have any questions, feel free to post the Q&A forums. I would definitely suggest that you try coding this out on your own, just using the notes as a guide and the slides as a guide. Thanks, I'll see you at the next lecture. Hello everyone, and welcome to the form validation lecture. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing hidden fields and how we can use them for custom field validation. The way our form is currently set up in our previous project, it's actually pretty open not only to users to maybe misuse the form or give bad information, but also potentially to bots, that is automated scripting programs that come in and fill junk information into your form on your website. Django has actually built-in validators you can conveniently use to validate your forms uh, not just for user misbehavior, but also for bots. And everything we do here is going to be limited to the forms.py file. So instead of going through the concepts in slides, we're going to jump straight into coding it all out. And we'll use the basic app from the previous lecture. So you can either just download that from the notes, or if you worked along with the previous solution lecture, have it ready to go. Okay, we'll do three main tasks here. We'll add a check for empty fields. We'll add a check for a bot, and then we'll show you how to use a clean method for the entire form. Okay, let's hop over to the editor and let's get started. Okay, here I have the editor open. I have the forms.py file that was under basic app or your application. And remember we have three basic inputs, the name, the email, and the text. And over here on the right, I have a browser that's connected to my local host. Right now I'm actually not running the server, so let's check it out. I'm going to say python manage.py run server, hit enter, and I can see that the server's here, so let's refresh this page. And then it says, welcome to the home page from last time, and let's type in slash form page, go to it. Here I see the name, email, and text. So again, remember, if I type in a name, type in some email, type in some text, and I hit submit, I actually get it printed out to the console, name, email, and text. Now, let's start off by looking at how we can use hidden fields. Now, a hidden field is something that remains in the HTML, but is actually hidden from the user. And a lot of times, we can actually use these to try to catch malicious bots on our website. And I'm going to collapse the directory here so we get a little more space. And let's create a field called bot catcher. And we'll call forms. It'll be a character field. and we'll pass in the requirement or required parameter to be false. And the reason we want to spe specify that required is equal to false is because when we actually have this field, it's not going to show up on the page for the user. It's only in the HTML in the background. So we actually need to inspect the page to even see that bot catcher exists. And we'll show that in just a moment. And then the next thing we want to do is define what widget we're using. So the widget parameter is going to be from forms. And instead of a text area or a checkbox or something like that, we're going to be using a hidden input. And that's what is going to allow us to hide this from a typical human user. And you can also give a label here. Uh, we won't need to do that. So let's actually just close that off. Those are the only two parameters we need. So if I save this and my page reloads, if I refresh and let's actually say cancel I'll hit submit one more time refresh hit continue and I'm going to inspect the page and in the elements actually don't need to check out the style so we can collapse that I expand the body it says fill out the form I expand the form and I see not just my CSRF remember that token but if I expand this I also see that I have this bot catcher input so remember that the CSRF, that's also helping the security of your website. You can see it actually has this uh, basically a random code value that's randomly generated for the user site. And Jingle is going to check that that matches on the back end. And that's just an extra layer of security to make sure that the input you put in the form isn't going to some other website or vice versa. Now, the input that we just made was bot catcher, which is given the ID automatically, ID underscore bot catcher. It's given the name bot catcher and the type is hidden. And basically what's going to, going to happen here is if a bot visits your page, 
they will not look at the actual website. What they're going to try to do is look directly into the HTML. And then they're going to try to automatically fill in value attributes and then submit the form that way. Now, if I am actually acting like a bot, I would, let's say, edit an attribute. Actually, we would add an attribute here. And the bot would come in, add a value, and say, um, hello, friend. Maybe they give you that value. You hit submit. And right now, the way it's working, uh, nothing is really happening here. So if, again, if I add that in, hit submit, you can see my extra characters are being added. So just to prove that one more time, if I type ZZZ, you can see it shows up here. The way we want to actually catch the bot is by validating this particular input. So let's show you how to do that now. So we'll show you first the most basic method of validation, which is using a clean function or a clean method inside of your class form. And then later we'll show you the built-in tools that Django has so you don't have to do this every time. So every time you want to create your own custom validator using this default method, you need to say DEF, so a method inside this class, then you use the keyword clean, underscore, and then whatever name of the field you're checking. In this case, it's bot catcher, so you can just copy and paste that. So then Django is going to automatically look for methods inside this class that start with clean underscore, and then see if this matches any of the fields there. And remember, this is a field inside of a class, so we use self. And then this is what I'm going, whoops, that should be a colon. Okay, self. And this is what I'm going to do first. I will say bot catcher is equal to self dot, and then I'm going to call the cleaned data and actually grab what bot catcher returned over here from my forms. And then I'm going to check if the length of bot catcher is greater than zero. You could also just say if length of bot catcher, but this might be a little easier to read, which means so if there's any actual length to the value that's returned in bot catcher, then I know some robot came in and scraped the page and filled in the HTML. A human would never actually do that. And then we're going to say raise an error. And there's lots of different errors you can raise. And you won't really have to worry about memorizing any of this because we'll move on to built-in validators. But just to give you an idea, the most basic one you're going to raise is a validation error, which kind of makes sense. And then we have something we can return, which would be printed to the console. And we'll say, gotcha bot. So once we raise that error, we'll return bot catcher itself. So we saved that. It's reloaded here since we made a change. And now let's try coming to this again. So go to the home page and then go to the form page. I'm going to fill out the form. So the name, we'll say Mr. Robot. The email, we can say it's Elliot at Evil Core. And then we'll say hello as the text. And then if you're a bot, what you're going to do is you'll come to this bot catcher, since remember, you're actually filling it all in through the HTML. And let's add an attribute here for the value. And we'll label it sneaky, since it's a sneaky bot trying to ruin your website. We hit submit. And then if we see what happens over here, nothing actually got returned. So we never actually printed anything because we end up raising that validation error. So again, if I hit submit here, I'm not actually ending up returning anything. So again, nothing's being printed out into the console because we're raising that validation error. And if you actually look at the page, the error has been outputted here on the page. It says hidden field bot catcher gotcha bot. So instead of actually printing out this user information, name, email, and text, we ended up actually grabbing that bot. Great. So that's the very basics of how you can use a clean underscore method inside of your form to do your own validation. But now let's show you how you would more realistically use validation once you're building your own websites using Django's built-in validators. Okay, let's continue by moving on to Django's core built-in validators, which will save you a lot of work in the future. So pretty much you'll never really do this clean underscore type of bot catcher validation. Instead, what you're going to end up do, doing is using the Django core. So we'll say from Django.core import, and then you're going to import validators. So save that. And then what you're going to be doing is in your actual fields here, you will pass in a validators 
parameter. So we'll say validators is equal to, and this is where you actually can pass in a list of validators. So what you end up doing is calling validators dot, and then you can check the documentation, but there are a ton of already built in validators. Things like checking what's the maximum length of the input, uh, how many characters it has, etc. And what we can do is say, use one of the built-in ones. So one of the built-in ones is max length validator. So that's a built-in method off of this validators. And what we can do is then just pass in as a parameter a number here. And typically you would want whatever the max length is. A lot of times it's going to be zero to check, especially for a bot, right? So basically we replaced all of the work we just did with a simple import call, import validators. And then in all of these fields, you can always pass in a validators parameter and this can take in a list of validators. So it's not just limited to one, it can pass in more than one. So we can save that. And then what we're going to end up doing is running this again. So we'll come here. And then I'm going to refresh the page. So delete that, go back to the home page, and then come back to form page, fill out the form. Doesn't really matter what we do. Go x, x at gmail.com, x over here, or a, doesn't matter. And then let's go in and do the bot again. So I will add an attribute value is equal to fooled. Let's make sure that matches. Hit enter. And then let's hit submit. And know what happens. Hidden field bot catcher. And then we actually see Django's built-in validator message come back. And sure, this value has at most zero characters. It has six. Great. So you can see that Django already has even more information built in as a report back. Okay, so hopefully you see that this is way easier to use than that clean method we had. All right, now that we've discussed Django's built-in validators, let's talk about how you can make your own custom validators using the same sort of methodology of passing in a validators parameter. Imagine we wanted to check for the name field that it start, started with a Z. We wanted to really make sure that for whatever reason, the names had to start with a Z. Well, maybe you didn't bother to check the documentation or couldn't find anything for your specific validation of starting with a Z or if a character starts with a certain letter. So what you end up doing is if you want to create your own to pass in as a validators parameter, you just create a function outside of the class and then you can name the function. So we'll call this check for Z. And the thing here to make sure is that it takes in value. And this is kind of the keyword that's going to help Django realize that this is going to act as a validator. And we'll say if value, whatever is returned here for this field, in this case, we're going to check for Z. So we'll say if value at zero is not equal to the character Z, and we can do further is do like lower here, we'll raise an error. So we'll raise forms dot validation error and say something like needs to start with Z and we'll say name just to make it clear. Save that and then inside this name what I can end up doing is saying validators is equal to and pass in a list and then just packs in my check for Z function which since it takes in value Django knows it's a validator now. So I will save this and let's make sure that my run server actually got refreshed, so I will refresh that. Okay, perfect. So now over here, what I'm going to do is say form page, and then let's fill out the form. First, we'll fill it out with just Jose, hi at gmail.com, and then some junk, hit submit, and it says name needs to start with Z. Perfect, so we know our own custom validation is working. Let's make sure it is by passing in just Z here, and then we'll say the same thing, and it took it in just fine, and it printed it out just fine. All right, so that is how you can make your own custom validation function. And this is usually a lot easier of an approach to take than that clean method we discussed earlier. Okay, now let's continue our discussion by talking about cleaning the entire form all at once. So we did see how we could create custom clean methods in our class for particular fields. But maybe sometimes you just wanna do one method that cleans the entire field and you don't want to worry about having to do something like an individual validator. So what do you do in that case? Well, let's delete this check for Z and I'm going to remove this validator over here. We'll save that and we can still check for bot catcher. That's fine. Actually, 
you know, we don't actually need that. Let's say we wanted to check something like a backup email. So a lot of times when you go to a website, you have to fill out your name and then fill out your email and then you have to verify your email. You have to fill it in twice, which makes sense because you don't want to have happen as you log into a page for the very first time or you're signing up that you mistype your email. Otherwise, there's no way you'll ever get a message to that email. So we can call what's a very common field as verify email. And this is something you'll see often. I'm sure if you've used the internet once, you've seen this. And we'll have verify field, and we're just going to give this a label to say something like, well, that should be equal, sorry. And we'll say, uh, enter your email again. So let's save that, and let's refresh the page to make sure that actually worked. Hit continue. Okay, perfect. So this field is required. Enter your email again. And you can use formatting in the HTML to make this all look nice. Since I'm asking for a paragraph, everything's kind of getting their own line break. But again, this would all be done with HTML or CSS styling. Right now, what we really care about is how do we clean this entire form at once to actually grab this email, grab this second email, and make sure they actually match? Well, just like we had the special clean method where you would say clean underscore and the name of the field you wanted to check, if you want to clean the entire form, all you have to do is just say clean. And that will indicate to Django that this is just a single clean method for the entire form at once. And what you can do here is call super. And what this is going to allow us to do is grab all the clean data at once. So we'll type a new variable. We'll call it all clean data. And then we call super, close parentheses. And then off of that, you call the clean method. And this is going to return all your clean data for the entire form. So you can deal with it all at once. And then off of this, you can grab certain fields. So we'll say email is equal to that all clean data. And then say, using bracket notation, because it's basically a dictionary, grab the email field, where this key comes from up here. And then we also want to grab verify email. So we'll say, we'll call it vmail for a verify email. Again, it's the all clean data, and I want to grab the verify email key. And then what I'm going to do is say, if my email is not equal to my verify email, I will raise an error. So I'll raise a validation error, forms dot validation error, validation error, and say whatever. So make sure emails match. Probably don't want to yell at the user in all uppercase, but it's fine for our purposes. And in this case, we don't actually need to return anything. Um, if the clean runs and everything works, that's totally fine. We don't need to return. Okay, so let's actually run this on our page. I'm going to run my server again because I cleared it here. Say python manage.py run server, hit enter, make sure it's running here. Perfect. I'm going to refresh this page. And then what I'm going to do is call the form page. So here I see my name, email, enter your email again as the label, text. So we'll say my name is Jose. And we're actually going to do a non-matching email first. So we'll say a dot, well, we'll say a at gmail.com and then b at gmail.com. So two different emails. Enter some text here. If I hit submit, I get back, make sure emails match. So it's cleaning the entire data form and you can do whatever you want with whatever fields from the data form. So now let's make sure these match. If I say Jose AA and then hit submit, looks like it's good and it actually prints out my name, my email and text, which means there was no errors. All right, that's the very basics and some more advanced features of how to actually custom validate your forms. So again, you can call your own custom clean underscore method to check just a simple field. You can use the built-in validators in Django, which is what I would recommend you do. And if you ever want to clean the entire form at once and do all your operations there, then you can use def clean and that will clean out the entire form. And remember, whenever you're creating your own custom validators, you want to make sure you pass in the keyword value before you pass it in here to one of these fields. All right, if you have any questions, definitely post the Q&A forums. And I would definitely suggest if you plan on using this in the future to check out the documentation page for Django's validators. It has a lot of useful information there as well as a ton more examples in case you want to see more. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you at the next lecture.
Hello everyone and welcome to the Model Forms lecture for Django Level 3. We've seen how we can use Django Forms to grab information from the user and then do something with it on the back end. And so far we've only printed out that information directly into the console. Nothing too useful, but what if we actually wanted to grab that information and save it to a model? So maybe we have a user that's signing up for our website and we want to save their information to a model. Or someone's inputting a reply post to a comment. We want to save that information to a model so we can always have it on our website. How do we actually do that? Luckily, Django makes accepting form input and then passing it to a model very simple. Instead of inheriting from that forms.forms class, we're instead going to be using forms.modelForm in our forms.py file. This helper class allows us to create a form from a pre-existing model. We then add an inline class, something we haven't actually seen before, called meta. And this meta class provides information connecting the model to the form. And that topic of an inline class is actually really simple. It's just a class within another class. Let's see some example code of what this new type of model form class would look like. All right, so this is the most generic code example that you would find inside an application's forms.py file. The very first thing you need to do is the actual imports. Just like before, we'll say from Django import forms. Except this time we're going to be using forms.modelForm instead of just forms.form. And then we also need to actually import our model from the models.py file inside our application. So you can import this however you want. Typically you'll see it done from my app.models import my model. A lot of times people also say from dot import models dot my model, etc. Then we have the actual form class. So you have class, whatever you want to call your form, in this case we're calling it my new form. And then you inherit or derive from the forms.modelForm class. So this is a subclass of that model form, very similar to what we did before. Right below that, you have the form fields that we showed earlier in the course. And then we have the meta class. That's the inline class. And this is what's really going to connect the model to the form fields. So again, the fields attribute inside of that class, that inline meta class, is going to do a lot of the connection to the model. So right now I have it in red about certain options, but let's discuss a little bit more about that inline class. So there are many ways to make that connection on the fields attribute of that inline class meta. But you first need to think about security for the fields. And it's also very common to not actually provide any additional field information. So before I mentioned that form fields like we typically saw would go right below that my new form class, but often since you're already matching up the form to match up with the model exactly, you don't actually need to specify those fields. So you'll typically just see the inline class immediately after that form class. So that's very common to see as well. And you can have the form be just generated completely from the model. And that saves you a lot of work. You don't have to type in those fields again. All you have to do is say class meta, model equals my model, and then connect the fields somehow, which we're going to talk about several options in just a little bit. But if you want to actually use custom validators like we previously discussed, then you do have to pass in those form fields where you provide the validator parameters. So most of the custom, most of the custom validation you'll have to provide if you want it, but the automatic cleaning and validation will be directly from your model. So remember your model had its own constraints and those sort of validation just come automatically when you call class meta and connect that to your model. So it's really up to you how you want to see this. It's very common just to see this class your form and then directly below it class meta and not have to worry about any custom validation. All right, let's continue on by discussing how we can actually work with that fields attribute that's inside that inline class meta. So option one is just to set it to the special keyword underscore underscore all underscore underscore. And basically what that does is you're grabbing all the fields from the model and you're going to place them into the form. Option two is to specify what fields you actually want to exclude. So here you can just pass in a list of the field names that you want to exclude. So you'll say my model, and I actually don't want to include field one in the form or field two in the form. And then option three is to actually list the included fields instead. So you can debate whether you have a huge model if it's easier to just include, or if you have a small model, if it's easier just to exclude. It really depends on what is better for you. All right, so we briefly went over the options of how to connect the fields, but I definitely suggest you check out the documentation for more discussion on how to connect the fields in the form to the fields in the model. 
The documentation page is really great for the model forms. Basically, just Google Django plus model forms. It'll take you there. It has a ton of examples, ton of different situations, and more discussion on certain security things. So if you plan on making this a big website where, for some reason, malicious users are going to come, uh, fields and forms are definitely something you want to keep secure. Django has a lot of built-in stuff. We've already seen things like the CSRF token, um, and even these special calls to options take security in mind. But if that's a big concern for you, definitely check out the documentation's full discussion on that. Okay, so let's get some practice with all of this. And what we're going to do is try adding a model form to our Pro 2, that was that second project, from Django Level 2. So this project, if you remember, had a single user class in its models.py file. What we're going to be doing is connecting it to a form allowing users to register their names and emails to the site. And this sort of logic could easily be used to create a simple coming soon landing page. So you've probably seen these single one page websites where you go in, they're working on a project and they say, oh, you know, come back soon or we'll email you to let you know whenever the project launches and it just has uh, enter your name, enter your email address and submit. And then when you submit, that information goes to a database that they can later access. So this is easily something you could do just based off of the information in this lecture plus everything we've already learned about. All right, so to get started, make sure you have the Pro 2 folder from the Django Level 2 folder in the notes. And to see the completed version of this, check out the Pro 2 folder in the Django Level 3 folder. Again, we're going to start with the finished Pro 2 folder from Django Level 2 and then work with it. By the end of this lecture, we'll have what's available to you in the notes under Django Level 3 Pro 2. So keep that in mind if you want to see kind of a before and after. And let's get started. I'll see you at the next lecture. Hello everyone and welcome to the Model Forms Exercise Lecture. In this lecture, we will work with the Pro 2 Project folder from Django Level 2. So if you still don't have that around, you can just download the notes and grab that Pro 2 Project folder. Remember from Django Level 2, that final project was to have that user with that HTML file use template tagging to display a list of all the users and their first name, their last name, and the email information. So we had that for loop inside that template tagging, and then we displayed all that information directly from the model. We're going to change this to be a signup page, and it's going to be connected to a model form that we previously discussed, so that the user goes to slash users, signs up on the user page, and once they hit submit, that information goes to the model, and the user gets taken back to the home page. A great exercise would be to try this on your own first. So optionally, you can attempt these exercise steps before viewing the rest of this lecture as an attempt to try this on your own. And these are the steps you're going to have to follow. You'll need to create a model form in forms.py. You'll have to connect the form in the template. Then you'll need to edit views.py to show the form and work with the form in case there's a post. And then you'll figure out how to save the data. That's something we didn't talk about in the previous lecture. So as an exercise, you'll have to look up in the documentation how to save the data. And the way I wrote save here is a really big hint on how to do it off the form. Once you figure that out, then just verify that the model is admin registered. So once you hit submit, you can log in as an administrator and see that the data is actually there inside the model. Okay, so again, I highly encourage you to try it out on your own. And you're going to need to look at the documentation in order to do that successfully. If that's not really your speed and you don't feel that comfortable doing it yet, feel free to just continue watching this and code along with me. All right, let's get started. All right, here I am at the editor, and right now I have my Pro 2 project inside a folder called Django Level 3, and it has the app 2, that was the second application we made. If we take a look at the templates, we have this index.html page, and then we have the users. And remember, this was the template tagging we used earlier to actually display all the user information directly from the models. And we're going to be replacing all of this with an actual form that connects directly to the models. So uh, as a quick note, depending on when you actually downloaded this, you may not have the models registered on your admin.py file. So make sure under app2 admin.py for this pro2 that you have these two lines here, app2.model import user and admin.site register user. Remember, we need to register our models in order to see them when we log in as an administrator. All right, let's start off with the front end actually. And then we'll come back to it later on as well. But here on the index page, we'll say welcome, go to users2, and we'll say sign up. And I'm actually going to add in uh, Bootstrap so this looks a little nicer. And I already have copied and pasted the link 
from bootstrap.com or getbootstrap.com, you can do the same. So I'll put that on the index page and I'll also put it on the users page. And in the next section of the course, we'll actually learn how we can uh, use one single basic template and then keep inheriting from the same template. So you don't have to keep writing so much HTML. But for right now, we'll have the same link in both of these files. And on this users page, this H1 is going to say, please sign up here. And I'm going to clear the rest of this since we won't be using it for now, everything else that's in the body. And just to make this look a little nicer, we'll put it inside of a container class and then we'll grab this and put that in here. And then on the index page, that home page, we'll put all of this into a container class as well. And in fact, let's put it all into a Jumbotron just so it looks a little more home pagey. Then grab this stuff and we'll put it in here. All right, looking good. And we'll come back to users.html and do some additional stuff in here with the actual form later on. But let's come to the forms, excuse me, app2 folder where we need to make a forms.py file. So we'll say new file, forms.py, hit enter, and we should have the forms.py file empty here. Now what we need to do is import forms as we did last time. So we'll say from Django, import forms, and then we also need to import our actual models. So we can say from dot, but I prefer actually naming it. So we'll say from app2, even though we're in the app2 directory, they don't need to actually say that. I could just say from dot. We'll say from app2.models, import, and then the actual name of the models we intend to use. In this case, it's just user. And now it's time to create that class. And in this case, we will call this something like new user. And we'll say forms dot, and then we call model form instead of just normal form. So typically, before we were just using form, but if I actually want this to connect to a model and edit that data, I'll have to use dot model form. And then we also have that inline class, which is going to be this meta class. And if you want to do your own custom validations, then you would define a field here, something like uh, whatever they're actually called, first name equals blah, 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 the forms dot character field. And then eventually you would add in your validator. But right now we're not going to do any of that. Um, we already covered how to do custom validation. So if you want to do that, that's fine. If you don't, that's also fine. And we'll say class meta and we'll create the model attribute. This should always be called model. And then you assign it to whatever model this form happens to link to. In this case, it's just one form here, user. If we had another model to import, that would have its own class with its own form model or own model form, I should say. And then we have the fields attribute. And we talked about the fields attribute in the previous lecture and the various ways to handle it. Since we're going to be using all the fields, we'll just use that special keyword, underscore, underscore, all, underscore, underscore, as a string. And as a quick note for this meta, you could either just do meta like this or have the open close parentheses for Python 3. Uh, that doesn't matter. It's basically the same thing. And now that we have that ready to go, let's go to our views.py file and make sure that it's connected to the form properly and that it's going to do something if the user actually hits submit. So we'll come to views.py and right now we just have our previous users that was returning information from the model. But instead we're going to be returning information directly from that form. So we'll delete that. Right now the index view, that's totally fine. We'll keep the same home page returning index.html. But for users, we're going to do something a little different. The first thing you have to do is actually make sure our form is working, which means we need to import it. So previously we were importing the model direct, uh, directly. We won't be using that since we're not actually grabbing information from the model to post. We're just going to grab stuff from the form. So we'll say from, and in this case, app2 dot, and it's the forms import, and we're going to import the new user. And just to make it really clear, let's actually call it new user form. That way we don't get confused. So we'll come back to forms.py and let's call this new user form, save that. And then in views, we'll call this new user form. That's a little clearer to me, just so I don't get anything messed up. And then we're also not using HTTP response anymore. That was one of the most basic things we learned about. So we'll comment that out. So we basically just have the render and new user form. Then we're going to be working with this. And let me grab some space here by collapsing the directory tree and also collapsing the terminal. We'll bring them back in a little bit. But the first thing I want to do is create a object or a variable here called form. 
and assign it to an instance of that new user form. So create an instance of that new user form inside the users view here. And then we'll say this, if the input request method is equal to post, then we're going to reassign form to be equal to an instance of new user form, except we'll pass in request.form, or excuse me, request.post. And then we'll scroll down, let's get a little more, let's focus on this one view function here. So okay, so basically what we're saying is, right now our form is an instance of that form class we just made. If the request method is equal to post, meaning someone hits submit on that form and is sending information back, we pass in the request.post. And then we check if it's valid or not. And as we discussed before, you can have your own custom validation checks, but we'll just do the automatic ones. So if the form is valid, meaning essentially they didn't mess anything up when hitting the submit button, so an email was an email, etc. Then here's the thing we didn't cover. In order to save the form, you can say form.save as the method. And what you can also do in order to commit it to the database is say commit is equal to true. So we'll save that. So we have if form is valid, form.save commits true. And then after this, what we're going to end up doing is returning and we'll return the index page. So we'll return the index view and then pass in the request. So what this basically means if someone says post, meaning they give back information and it's valid, we will save that form using the save method off of it. And then I'm going to return the index view of the request, which in it will just return the render request of the home page. So this will basically take you back to the home page. Now, what if they actually don't do anything so we can say, have an else statement here. Let's say the form isn't valid. Um, we can just say else. And there's a lot of things you could do, like raise an error, et cetera. Right now we'll just print error form invalid. We won't actually end up experiencing this because we're not gonna uh, have an invalid form anywhere. And then outside of all of this, we need to actually return something so that it matches the actual page. So we'll say DEF users. And on the very first level of indentation inside of this view function, I'm going to return and we'll say render request and then pass in wherever our users page is. It's under app two. And let's make sure that the folders matches. So under templates, we see app two. So that's actually capitalized. Although as a string passing it, I don't believe it makes a difference, but we can always just check on that. So app2, remember templates, app2, index.html, this goes to templates, app2, and we send back uh, whatever our page is, and it was called users.html. Then finally, we wanna send back that context dictionary that actually contains the form. And it's very common just to give it the key form and then pass in that form object, which is this guy. All right, so we will save that. Now let's go back to users.html and fix this up so it contains the form. So the first thing we need to do is actually create that form tag. We don't need to really worry about action right now because we're kind of handling that ourselves, not with the HTML. And we don't need to assign it a class. If you want to add more styling to it, you can do that. We definitely need to say method is post though, and either lowercase or uppercase works. I like putting it in uppercase just so it's very clear to me what's happening. And then what we're going to do is use that template tagging and we'll pass in form. Technically that's all you need to do, but in order to get those nice line breaks, we can say as underscore p, so that way each actual thing, each actual widget of the form is a paragraph tag. And then remember, this is something beginners often forget, is that csrf tag, or token I should say. So we have csrf underscore token, and we need that in order to make sure the form is secure and just so it runs period. And then finally, we need the input. So the input style is going to be, or the type, will be submit. We don't need to give it a name. What we can do is give it a class, just since we have bootstrap here, let's make it look a little nicer. So we'll give it a class btn and then btn primary. And then finally the value, whatever the button's actually going to show can be submit. All right, so hopefully we've taken care of everything. We have our users HTML ready to go. Index looks good as well, Jumbotron. Uh, the URLs are already matched up from the previous iteration of this project. So we have users calling app2.urls and urls.py here is looking good, users.users. And then we have our actual views. This was probably the hardest part out of all this. 
and it's returning back that dictionary, which we're calling in the users.html over here with form. So let's actually test this out and see if it all worked. I'm going to CD into Pro2. And then what I'm going to do is say Python manage.py, and then we'll say run server. If depending on how far you got in the previous Django level two Pro2 folder, you may need to actually run the migrations. Um, if you went along with me throughout the entire co course and were coding along correctly, then you shouldn't need to make those migrations. But keep that in mind, you may need to make the migrations in order to have everything be connected. But I should already have everything connected. So let's actually run the server. Let's make sure we don't get an error out. So that's a good sign, no error. Let's copy this. Actually, we don't need to copy it because I already have it here on my URL. So I'll just refresh. Okay, so far so good. It says, welcome, go to users to sign up. So let's do that. We'll go to slash users, hit enter. And now we get this please sign up here. Also looking pretty good. Let's make a really obvious first name. So we'll say, I'm new first for the first name. That way when I look into this page as an administrator, I can easily know that I actually worked correctly. Uh, last name, we can say, my last name, and then email will say uh, it worked at whatever, yahoo.com. We'll hit submit, and perfect. It took us back to the homepage, just like we uh, thought it would. And we can see that it also sent a post, so that's looking pretty uh, good right now. Now let's go to the admin site and make sure it all worked. So we'll go slash admin, and if you don't remember your username or password from Django level two, feel free to just use python manage.py create super user. Remember that command, all you have to do is provide your username, an email, and type in your password twice. So hopefully I remember my password. It was just test password, something very simple. And my username was Jose, we'll log in, see if that works. Okay, looks like I did not remember my password. So I don't remember this, so let's actually create a new one. Uh, you probably are in the same boat as me. So we'll say python manage.py, create super user, and then let's give it Jose, email address, hello at gmail.com, doesn't really matter. And then the password, this does matter. We'll say test password, test password. And now let's try this again. So we'll say python manage.py run server. I'm going to refresh my actual admin page. And now let's try this again. So Jose, and then test password, log in, perfect. And now if I expand this, I can see here, I have app to users. And as I mentioned a few times, uh, users may not be the best name because under authentication and authorization, you already have users, but it's up to you. Keep that in mind. Right now, everything's so simple and small, shouldn't be much of a difference. So we'll click on users over here. And we see we have a bunch of user objects. So if you ran the population script, you'll also have a bunch of user objects. The most recent one should be the one at the top, which is the one we just entered. So let's click on it. And here it is. I'm new first, my last name. It worked at yahoo.com. Perfect. So now we can do whatever we want with this as a super user. But basically we just showed that the user can input information and then we can access it in our models, which connects to a database. And that's the basic premise of using a model form. All right. I hope you now really see uh, the power and hopefully your mind, the gears are working here and you can essentially realize that you now have the power to start making almost any website you want to make. You have the ability to gather information from the user, save it, and you also know how to return it back to the user. I'll be, you know, in very simple fashions, but eventually the rest is just styling. Okay, hope you enjoyed the lecture and I will see you at the next section of the course. Thanks everybody.